Right. Um, hi, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. And, uh, you know, welcome to this webinar with uh, Kapil Khosla. Um, just for intros, my name is uh, Ravi. I'm one of the co-founders of Upgrad and I lead product at Upgrad. Um, Kapil is a big sort of uh, product industry veteran. He is uh, currently a senior product manager at Twitter. And, um, you know, he was the former lead of product um, at Google in India. Uh, Kapil, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, you know, it's great to have you here. Um, and, you know, sort of thanks a lot for taking out the time to share your thoughts with, you know, a lot of people who are sort of aspiring to get into product management. Yes, yes I'm happy to be here and very excited for this session. Thanks. So, yeah, let's let's dive uh, right into it. Um, Kapil, I think, uh, you know, the first question that everybody has, you know, right now, given, you know, slight boom and bust cycle also happening uh, you know, in the startup industry. Uh, where do you see the product ecosystem going in India? What do you think the future looks like in terms of, uh, you know, opportunities and product roles uh, within the Indian ecosystem? Yes, yes. I think uh, I think this boom and bust happens, right? I, I think we are in the start of something pretty big. At least I'm very excited for the product ecosystem in India. I think if you look at 10 years back, we were predominantly a services industry. So right. we are definitely becoming a product nation overall. So this boom and bust will happen, but India will rise again. And I'm I'm very confident that we're going to emerge as a very strong product country as well. So I think this is a small phase that we are going to go through uh, with some of the companies that had very high valuations. They're going to uh, settle down a bit. But, uh, but in the future, I think the future is very strong for India. We have some high technology talent and product talent. Uh, so we should we should be creating some great products from India in the next four or five years. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what, you know, another sort of first question that a lot of people ask me as well, uh, you know, people who want to get into product management, you know, aspiring to be product managers from, you know, either different functions or from business schools. Um, what are the most important skills, you know, that a product manager needs in your opinion? Yeah. <clears throat> I think so product manager is a very interesting role. It's not very well defined, right? I mean, if you, if, right. you, if you see, it's a role that plays many hats. Like as a product manager, you have to play many hats and depending on, frankly, the day or the cycle of the product, you'll, you'll end up doing very different things. So I think uh, it's hard to define uh, one thing that a product manager will be doing. But for people who are looking to get, in, get enter into the career, I think I think really... People who are good and cross-functional uh, generally uh, thrive as a product manager. So someone who can play a role of talking to engineers on the same day, talking to someone in marketing and looking at some dashboard and looking at metrics and making some decision based on that. Right. So generally it's a, you can say it's a jack of all trades. You know about a lot of like on a given day, I'll be talking to legal uh, user services, privacy, identity, sometimes marketing sales, so it's a cross-functional role. Generally, people right. who, are, who, who are good in talking to multiple disciplines do very good in this role. Got it. Got it. And how's your, you know, personal journey been in product management? You know, since you mentioned that, you know, it's, it's pretty diverse and, you know, it's every everyone's journey into product is different. Sort of, how was it for you? Like, you know, when did you decide to sort of move into yep. product management? And, you know, what were sort of the key challenges you faced as, you know, you sort of stepped into that role? Yes, yes. So I think I was a I was a engineer with Microsoft in Seattle um, for about five years, uh, and after that, I was already starting to play a role of a program manager, where I was the guy who my PM at that time would go for all the metrics, right? Okay. So I would I would be the one with the dashboard looking at the how the metrics were doing, and she started to rely more and more on me for metrics. So that got me the entry point into product management, where I I was good in pulling data and analyzing that and coming out with insights from that data. Right? That, that was the start of journey. And then I moved over to Bing as a product manager uh, and then Google as a product manager. So I stayed, but metrics was my entry point uh, from switching from an engineer to a product manager. Got it. Got it. And coming, you know, from an engineering background, um, did you face any sort of challenges when you stepped into the PM role? Because we have a lot of people, you know, who've expressed interest in our, uh, PM program who are from an engineering background. You know, that's always a question that as an engineer transitioning into product manager, 
Um, are there any specific things that I should look out for, you know, that could be any potential pitfalls? Yeah, I think uh, I feel I feel engineers make amazing product managers like at Google. There was a requirement that every single product manager has to be an engineer. And right. Actually, you know, I mean, strict requirement uh, early on, it was they have to be a computer science engineer. And later on, they relax the requirement to be they have to be an engineer. Right. So I think being an engineer is a big asset uh, to you because you already are data driven. You are already looking at solving uh, problems from a technical perspective. You're already good in talking to engineers. So you right. have a lot of things for you already. Just a few things that you need to spend more time on is not to get to because you realize, right, like when I I was a lead in uh, as an engineer, an engineering lead in in my previous team in Microsoft and you would become a product manager in a different team and you would have like, oh, I can do it better, right? But then right. you have to stay away from that you have to realize you're no longer an uh, engineering lead. You are now a product manager. So you have to do all these other things as well. So you have to somehow lead with, uh, like, you know, uh, you have to lead without having um, people reporting to you. You have to lead by influencing uh, indirectly. I think so that's a trick that you need to master which is not having leadership by people reporting to you, but by influencing people around you and, and making impact. Got it, got it. So those are skills you end up building as you, as you get on this journey. Got it. And there's, there's uh, you know, although I was going to take audience questions later, but there's just one that came in from Pankaj and, you know, there are a bunch, uh, you know, sort of which is on a common theme, which is like, as you mentioned, you know, kind of I agree that, you know, an engineering background is very helpful, um, you know, in order to have a successful career as a PM. Um, is that essential? Uh, you know, are, uh, you know, can non-engineers be confident that, you know, they can go on and become sort of good PMs? Absolutely. I think you have to, you have to define what your uh, key uh, skills are, right? So, for example, I would say the three most important skills for a product manager are one is customer empathy. Right. You right. have to have to understand your customers really well. So if you are someone who is able to talk to customers and truly understand and listen to customers and truly understand what is it that they want so that you're able to build the right product for them, I think you'll, you'll be an amazing product manager. So, so customer right. empathy is one. Second is understanding of good design versus bad design. Right. I think that's another thing that you need to understand, like, you know, is this product that you're building usable? Right. And um, and like, you know, that is another something. So I've seen designers build be amazing product managers as well. Like the guy who heads Practos uh, product team is actually a designer. Right. right. Uh, similarly, a lot of Flipkart were designers who have now become product managers. So I think designers also make great products. So, so customer empathy, uh, focus on design. And third is metrics focused. I think those three things together make a great product manager overall, in addition to having the cross functional strength. So it doesn't have to be, you have to be an engineer, but it's good if you have a larger uh, authority in one of those three big areas. Got it, got it. And as a non-engineer, um, is there something I can do to sort of build up, uh, you know, my wherewithal of technology or sort of, you know, how, you know, just the internet or how the mobile apps work. Is there something that I can focus on to sort of, you know, get up to speed with that? Yeah. So at least uh, typically in my interview questions or not just mine, most Google interview questions are, are like this, like pick a favorite product that you love and, uh, and tell me like three things that you would change if you were the product manager for that product. Right. Yeah. So say, say you yeah. like, uh, and you know, it's a tough question because, you know, here I like WhatsApp. Now, what would you change in WhatsApp uh, to yeah. make it even more compelling, right? And when you start thinking about though, that question, then you realize that like you're starting to become a product manager, right? So, and, and now because you look at it, not just from this is my favorite feature, but what is the impact that this feature is going to create in terms of the metrics that WhatsApp cares about, right? right. Uh, when you start doing that is when you are starting that journey. So you don't have to, like, you know, I mean, that's an easy way for you to start getting product uh, sense uh, before you become a product manager. Right, right. Yeah, sorry, I was I was smiling because that was one of the first questions we asked in our interview as well for the program. And I think it's a it's an excellent uh, you know it's an excellent question. Um, yes. You know, just coming to um, a couple, you've been sort of in a unique position that you've seen how products have been built 
in the valley and also you've seen the uh, sort of uh, the indian context you know uh, you have a network in india as well do you see yeah. any fundamental differences in how sort of product management is carried out or perceived uh, you know in india versus the valley uh, and are there any learnings that the ecosystem here could take from how things are done in the valley yeah i think there's a few big differences that i and i'm not comparing uh, google and twitter in india i'm comparing startups versus uh, like the valley startups right the big difference i feel that uh, because of the pressure that startups in india have to right now to show monetization or revenue uh, right. or unit economic what have you uh, right now it's that's the focus uh, six months to a year back the focus was on growth like i need to get to like 5 million downloads right, right. because of a lot of product managers in india started focusing on what i would say growth hacking they would like i would meet them and i would like what are you working on and then they're like oh we are trying to figure out these multiple play stores in which we can make our app available so our app will be downloaded by a few hundred thousand users right. or we are trying to build incentive programs so that more downloads happen for our product because our vc is saying only if you give us this much downloads is when we can give you another round or something like that right so right product this is not product management right this may be growth hacking but this is not product management so in india a lot of pms tend to get sucked into growth um, right. which is unfortunate because product managers need to have a long term view of the product and they need to be thinking from a user perspective like if you, if you see flipkart right now uh, flipkart is a great example of a product that became hugely successful but product managers need to think of differentiation of flipkart from amazon not so much on uh, in the early days like you know what is the download numbers that flipkart has versus amazon has and stuff like that so right. uh, product managers need to think about the user at the forefront which has not been the case in india for the most part unless uh, the few companies who still do a very good job at it but most startups haven't quite uh, gotten that right in my limited experience that i've had with the startup got it got it got it and if you talk about i think you you sort of briefly mentioned that you know twitter and google and facebook have now you know sort of decent decently big offices in india um what is the kind of product work that is happening uh, you know in these companies in india is it mostly related to sort of localization of the product for the indian market or you know are there fundamentally new products being thought of uh, ground up from the indian offices i think that's also a question where a lot of people have been asking us you know when thinking about you know what would be a good company to start their product management journey yeah, yeah. i think uh, in general a valley product comp- well i guess there are three different models right one is i think how microsoft started their entry into india which is i have a product that's working well in the us but i don't want to support it in the us because of cost it's a cost arbitrage i'm going to move that product to india so right. india i can hire a a team of 50 engineers for a team of 5 engineers that i want to have so that's the first model where uh, a lot of companies come into india with a model for cost arbitrage uh, google twitter facebook they don't do that right so a few companies in the in the early 2000s used to do that but that's that's a model that's not very uh, appealing because obviously you're doing something that someone in us doesn't want to do you're building for customers that you don't fully understand so it's not an ideal place to be but it's a good start like you know if you're just looking for an entry into product management in a large company is probably an okay start the second model is that uh, you are building for the us customers but you're building a new product from india right that's a that's a model google definitely has which is uh, like build a global product from technology talent that you have in india I think that's a great uh, place to be in because you you have an ability to build something that will go to the entire world not just India. Uh, that's a great place to be. Uh, third is where you're building a product in the local office for the local market which I think is the most appealing. Right? Which is the most appealing because you as a product manager completely understand those users. You're able to do user research, you're able to do product market validation without having many dependencies. I think that's a model that's the most appealing, and that's a model that uh, both Google, Twitter uh, have as well for focus on the local market. So uh, those are three models. So uh, outsource the U.S. product work to India, build new products from India for global market, and build local products for the local market. Got it. Got it. Thanks. That was helpful. 
Um, so I think next question, uh, you know, again, between these big product companies like, you know, a Google or Facebook or a Twitter, um, are there very fundamentally different skills, um, you know, that the companies would look for, or is the process of sort of hiring and recruiting very different from company to company? Um, or, you know, if I'm an aspiring product manager and I want to get into one of these big product companies, um, you know, even including like a Flipkart or Inmobi or the other big Indian product company, um, do I need to really prepare very differently from each, for each one of them? Or is it like the process of hiring PMs and what these companies look for pretty like standard across the board? No, it's standard. I think it's the same. Um, I think there's no difference. I mean, I work for Microsoft, Google, and Twitter. I think the hiring process is always the same. Uh, the the skills they look for is pretty much the same. Um, I think, yeah, I think really what they're going to be looking at is, uh, are you analytical? Like, for example, a question that Google loves to ask its product managers is, I mean, there are various variations of it, but uh, there will be a product sense question, like the one I, I, I mentioned earlier. There will be an analytic question, which is how many cars do you think are in Bangalore? Right? I mean, it's a, it's a high-level question where you're like, how do I even know that? Right? Where do I even start? Right? Or how many queries do you think Google gets in a day right? in India? So there are questions which are very high-level, which are analytical, but then you'll have to get into some... Um, I mean, they're, they're looking for, like, you know, can you think on your feet? Or are you going to be like, oh, my God, this is like, you know, I just have no idea for that. So those are the two big areas where uh, companies will focus on product sense, product strategy and analytics are the three broad areas uh, all the companies will focus on in all addition right. to testing your communication skills the softer skills i'm talking about the hard skills soft skills obviously they'll test your communication skills your collaboration skills and other stuff but uh, these three are the are, are the more uh, interesting and the more tougher questions that they typically ask got it got it and I think one of one of the things that a lot of people dread again, you know, people who are not coming from a tech background is that engineering round, you know, which Google has always, um, you know, as as a mandatory part. Um, as as again, I know we touched upon, you know, what we could be doing, but specifically talking about, you know, the engineering of the technology component. Um, as an aspiring PM, um, is there sort of some fundamentals of technology that sort of, you know, I should definitely know about that, you know, is a high likelihood that I'll be tested on in my interview process at either Google or Twitter? I think it's mostly uh, data structures. Uh, you have to know them well, like the graph or the tree or... And I think if you have actually built a product or two, uh, the technical questions is actually not very difficult, right? If you have been an engineer yourself, technical round is probably the easier one, right? But yes, you need to know the data structures. You need to know what a graph is. Uh, the question that Google had for me when I had joined was uh, was related to graph, right? It was like given open and and you see a lot of the questions that uh, these companies will ask you have actually no right answer, right? There is no right answer for the question. What they're really looking to test is how do you handle a tough situation, right? So for example, how would you build a music streaming service for someone uh, who just came on the internet? Right. So it's not a Savan or a Ghana, uh, with someone who has a Wi-Fi or a 3G or a 4G, right? Someone who has a 2G connection, uh, with a with a smartphone that is probably four thousand rupees, uh, uh, like like an average smartphone, how do you build a great music streaming service for that user? Now that's a tough question, and there is no right answer. Uh, but but the point is not to have uh, a lot of engineers like to think, oh, there is a there is an answer to that question. Right? There is none. What they are really looking to test is uh, how do you think? Right. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of. Uh, so it's like, how do you think on your feet uh, is the key thing that all these interviews will test you on. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, I think we are sort of, uh, you know, going to start jumping into some of the audience questions. Um, so, you know, people have been sending questions on live chat and also, you know, we have curated some that people had sent beforehand. So I think first question, which a lot of people had asked was that, um, as a PM, you know, you have some ideas. There are other people giving you probably like 10 other ideas for your product. When you sit and think about prioritization, uh, you know, what should you be building first? Um, yeah. 
how do you how do you make that decision is there a certain sort of framework are there certain sort of you know metrics that you sort of base that decision on i think uh, so let me just pause one second i just noticed there are tons of questions around uh, audio not coming properly is there something that uh, i should be doing differently maybe um, um okay I, in the I, chat at least yeah i think i yeah audio here seems to be working fine but guys for whoever is facing audio issues is it when kapil is speaking or when i am speaking or is it like you're facing a constant audio problem okay i guess there are okay, like Oh, it says uh, you do has echo so maybe when i speak can you mute do you think that'll help yeah and i think when i'm speaking now i'm trying to uh, mute but it seems like some people it's working fine and some people i i it could even be like the difference in internet connections i guess um but i'm i'm actually mm-hmm. um um i i i do um mute when sort of you know i'm speaking but uh, sort of uh, i mute my speaker when i'm speaking but uh, Okay, cool. Because I'm actually using a corner yeah, mic, so it's it's slightly more difficult to use. Uh, Got it. But okay, I think if we can sort of figure out some of, yeah. Okay, uh, but I think Kapil, yeah, we can uh, we can sort of uh, continue. And guys, yes, so the recording for this will also be available, and we'll transcript it for you know whoever is facing audio issues. So you know you can always sort of uh, refer to the transcript. Uh, but yeah, sort of coming back to the prioritization question, um, you know, is there sort of a framework that you use when you think about prioritizing different products or uh, you know how yeah. do you go about thinking about it right i think uh, frankly the only, the only thing that matters is is impact right so uh, the the thing we do is uh, when we are building features we are very clear on what is the metric that feature is going to move right so we are very clear what is the overall metric for a product right so say so, so let's take whatsapp as, as an example so whatsapp the metric probably is increase the number of messages sent per day right uh, or it is uh, getting most of your contact list on whatsapp right so 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 maybe they have defined these two metrics when you are building a new feature the question to ask yourself is will it move that metric and what is your hypothesis and if yes then we go build it we implement it and then we measure at the end of the day right so always look at impact and metrics that feature that you're going to add or remove is going to create right so so that's the only thing that matters uh, when it comes to prioritization in general uh, both google and twitter and uh, any other company uh, which is scaled up does understand that adding features is not really key to use a uh, product growth or user growth in a lot of cases it's about removing features so don't think it's about adding features to your product Uh, is going to help right a lot of cases it's about a decision on what is the right set of features for your product to move the needle on the metrics right. and as you know kapil like you know i've also noticed uh, um, you know this uh, in 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 my day to day sort of role that a lot of times you have to say no to people right because uh, you know people will come up with ideas that you know they're convinced is the next you know best thing for the product but you have to sort of you know assess on you know as you mentioned whether it's just about adding new features or adding actual value to the users as a yep. young pm if i am entering sort of you know new organization um is is there sort of a problem you know or will i be sort of will it be held against me if i'm saying no a lot like how do you think I, you know as a as a new pm you know mm-hmm. should try and balance this point exactly i think it's a great question and i think it's difficult uh, as like the organization is larger is definitely difficult but the strategy that i have used in my team is to have everything based on data so what that means is that uh, there's a process now in place that someone comes out with a new idea that idea doesn't go to product or engineers to build directly right what ends up happening is that the idea gets taken to the design team which ends up building a prototype for that idea the prototype ends up going to real users who give us feedback on that idea before even it reaches the engineering or any other matter right so we have a process now that we are able to get a lot of feedback on the idea without actually building the product 
right? So that's the beauty about it. So I think in some cases, defining a process around it so that no arbit um, ideas from anyone will disrupt your thinking is is important. So that's the strategy that I have used and it has worked out well for me. Great. Um, and I think another um, question is sort of, I think you would again touched upon in the Indian ecosystem, which is, you know, short term versus long term. You know, sometimes there is, um, you know, there's obviously pressure on, um, you know, driving sort of short term results. But as a PM, you also need to be thinking about the long term. Uh, again, as a young PM, is there a way I could strike that balance? Should I, you know, if, if I've just joined an organization, um, should I be looking first for quick short term wins so that, you know, like the organization sees value in the decision to hire me? I mean, there's always, you know, the, the tendency or the, uh, you know, to do that. Um, so how, how, again, as a young PM, should I sort of approach this, uh, you know, when I start my role? Exactly. I think you have to do both, right? Because you are, you are hired to do something very specific, right? So you definitely, as a young PM, you focus on delivering what you've been asked for. But in addition to doing that, spend whatever time you have networking. By networking, I mean knowing the different people in the organization and not just the engineering organization, the sales organization, the marketing organization, legal if you have one, uh, like different phases, uh, maybe operations, so that you know a lot of people. So in the future, like six months down the lane or one year down the lane, when you're a little more grounded and you've built a few features yourself, when someone comes and asks you, you're able to use that larger network that you have created to either say yes or no to a feature. Right? So network, network, network is the key for a product manager to be successful across the organization and not just vertically, also horizontally. Right. Uh, it's great to network vertically because you get to meet executives, but also network horizontally with people who are actually doing the work on the ground. And, and there's a great book that I highly recommend. It's called Never Eat Alone. Right. It's a great book to understand the value of networking. A lot of people mistake networking for uh, like you go to a conference and you get a lot of business cards, right? That's not networking that I'm referring to, right? So get this book, Never Eat Alone. It's a fantastic book that explains how to get things done through networking. Sorry. Sorry, I'm like going to and fro between muting you, muting me, so that, you know, if anyone's facing audio uh, audio issues, you know, it's it's kind of resolved. Um, I think then uh, another question that a lot of people ask is that, is there a big difference in how, um, you know, product management is sort of approached or looked at at some of the sort of the startups, like a Series A or Series B company versus, you know, like, a, you know, let's say if I join a Twitter or Google, you know, because there's the, on one hand, I think if I go to a Twitter or Google, um, you know, I might get mentors to learn uh, from quite yeah. a lot. Versus, um, you know, in a startup, I might just get a lot more responsibility, right? Because it might just be a very small team and I'm pretty much driving everything. Um, again, as a young exactly. PM, do you have any, uh, for a young PM, sorry, do you have any uh, advice on sort of, uh, you know, which way to tell it when I'm sort of looking to start my career? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it is, uh, in, my, in my experience, at least in the Valley, Best product managers you will see uh, would have either started their careers in a very young state, very early stage startup, because when you are at that stage, you have actually like, you know, you have like right from a concept or an idea, you've taken the product to a product market fit. You've gone with that product to uh, like a much larger audience and you scale the product. You would typically be able to like, you know, you'll be an expert, but then that assumes that you join the right company at the right time, right? That you join, like say someone was to join Google in 99 as a product manager, right? I mean, he or she clearly uh, would have such an amazing experience that nobody else would have in the Valley. So I think there are pros and cons of doing both. Uh, in general, maybe spend a year or two in a big company uh, to learn the basics and then uh, see if you can join a startup, which is before product market fit to really get the most bang for the buck. Um, I think this, this is a question also that's come up from, you know, uh, uh, a couple of people. If there is uh, such a thing, can you define like a typical day uh, you know, as a product manager, maybe in Google or Twitter, like how would your day uh, look like? 
So it's very different. Uh, I think I think I can't say there is a typical uh, typical day that I have, right? So it depends on the phase of the product development that you're also in. If you are building a product uh, very early in the product, then a lot of your time is going to be spent with design or user research, right? You're talking to customers, you're talking to users, you're talking to your designers, and you're uh, building mocks, building prototypes. When you have built a product. Uh, then essentially the lot of time you're going to be spending is validation of your product. You're again going to be talking to users, but then it'll be uh, whether it's an NPS score, which is the net promoter score or uh, the, like the product market fit survey, like how happy are the users with your product, right? Uh, when you've launched the product to the play store and the product is growing, a lot of time is going to be on metrics and dashboard. And, and seeing if there are any health issues, uh, are users growing the way you expect? Are there concerns around churn or reselection? So I think depends on the phase of product development you are in, your day is gonna look very, very different. Uh, so there's no, and I think when much later on, uh, you will also have time with like legal and if there are legal questions, uh, someone just wrote, uh, and maybe there are customer reviews on the Play Store that you have to now manage. So there is no typical day. It just depends on which phase of the product you are in at that point of time. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, and I think um, um, another question that you know people have is when I'm joining a new team, let's say uh, you know there is an established engineering team in that organization. Um, how do I earn the respect of these different teams, you know, when, especially when they're not directly reporting to me? I know you mentioned, you yes. know, it's all about leadership by influence, but um, how do I sort of like, you know, kind of ease into that? So people, A, obviously I want, I want them to feel that, you know, I have some sort of power and I have some drive to, you know, add value to my users, yeah. but also I'm not suddenly coming in and, you know, acting as if I'm everyone's boss. Exactly. I think, uh, I think you have to, earn the trust there is no easy way and you know it's difficult right i mean you're coming as a person from outside it's very difficult to earn the trust but in general i think uh, the thing that helps me the most is to be uh, like my team knows that if there's anything about the market or the competition or the customer like i'm the person who knows the most about it right so um, so for example if you were if if you were let's like say you were flipkart right you're in e-commerce uh, you're in e-commerce like you're expected to know everything that's happening in the e-commerce industry um what are the metrics how snapdeal doing what's amazon doing what's the company strategy overall so you need to be the voice of the business you need to be the voice of the executives and you need to be the so, so your, your customer business and your competition all these three uh, your team needs to see that you are the person who knows the most about it and you are the person who is communicating this information to them. Okay? That's the easiest way to earn the trust. A lot of PMs make a mistake of I'm going to help the engineers build the product as a way to get some cookies, right? So what they end up doing is, oh, this build is going out. Why don't we do some testing for you for the build, which is great to do, but then that's, that becomes their job. Or, or the mistake that they make is, oh, you're having some issues uh, with with the build. Like, you know, why don't I upload it on Crashalytics or App, App Store or Play Store or whatever? So they end up end up doing menial tasks that engineering would anyway end up doing, but they don't want to do. They end up taking those tasks to make some brownie points, which ends up hurting them in the long run because then they're not doing product management. Then they're doing support. So, uh, so it's key to focus on customer competition and business to earn the trust of developers in the long run. Right. Got it. Um, I think a couple of, again, sort of questions that are coming in is, are, you know, what technologies should a product manager be aware of? And uh, guys, I think if you may have joined late, couples already answered those. Um, and I think we'll sort of have them in the recording and in the transcript. Um, I think, uh, um, Another key question, uh, Kapil, is that, you know, we touched upon sort of fundamentals of engineering or fundamentals of technology that, uh, uh, you know, people, um, you know, people should know as a PM. Um, how much of the actual sort of, you know, like the build, the sort of the deployment, the continuous integration, like those sort of, you know, processes, um, and, you know, it's different from company to company, whether you're mobile first, uh, web first company. Um, 
how much in the weeds should a PM go into that while making, um, especially when it comes to making decisions? You know, should all engineering decisions, um, you know, based even like what technology stack should be used for a particular product if you're building something from scratch? Should that always be left to the engineering team, or you know, should PMs try to have a very strong viewpoint uh, in that? Right. I would say so. As a PM, you have to you have to understand uh, engineering basics, right? But never get into the details of what technology to use or what framework to use or any of those decisions, right? What I end up doing, uh, I end up, uh, I have to realize that the guys are stuck with this particular decision that they have to make. What I end up doing is I end up reaching in the ecosystem for other startups and businesses that have done a good job at solving that problem and connect my engineering lead to them, right? So I play the role of a connector versus like a couple has told to use this technology thus use it and let them autom- come up making a decision themselves right because if i tell them to use this technology uh, then i'm going to be accountable for that right and 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 that is not healthy for a team everyone needs to have a clear role uh, the engineering manager needs to be empowered by being able to take the decisions on engineering Right. Uh, so and, and that's where the product manager roles is. Right. You you end up having a lot of people who are each responsible for their own job and you're connecting all of them together to get the job done. So I would say don't get in the business of telling what technology to use to your team. That's not your job. Got it. Um, and are the skill sets or sort of the, the attitude of a product manager, you know, taking a business from zero to one? Um, is it very, very different from, you know, a product manager who's sort of, you know, working on a product, which is sort of the one to end stage, you know, as people call it, when it's already sort of out in the market, maybe, you know, has achieved yes. product market fit. Um, yes. Are those sort of two yeah. very different skill sets and should people look to specialize early on? Um, or is it sort of more you be a generalist and then, you know, if your sort of fundamentals are clear, you can fit in either. I think so. In my case, I've done both. I've done the zero to one and I've done one to n. I think zero to one is is more fun, right? You basically have a lot of unknowns and you learn a lot. You learn a lot from when you're in a zero to one state. In a one to n, I think it's very incremental in nature. As you said, there is less learning to, to have, but I think the skills are different, right? The zero to one, you need to be experimental. You need to be very bold uh, in making decisions and you need to understand your competition and customer really, really well. In one to end, it's more execution focused. It's about like, you know, you're successful. You just got to be able to ship this feature this week, this month, this quarter, right? So the skill set is different. Zero to one is a lot more experimental, a lot more bold, a lot more fun. Uh, A lot of sleepless nights. You're like, this is not going to work, right? One to N is more predictable, more execution. So it really depends. Like some PMs are more execution focused. They love, they love executing. They don't like unknowns, right? They want things to be very predictable. So it really depends on who you are. Like I have seen PMs who are extremely diligent when it comes to execution and they generally fit very well in one to N situations. So it, yeah, it really depends on what you like, what you love and, uh, and, and what you get the kick out of essentially. Awesome. And, uh, you know, are there any sort of good, I know you mentioned one, one book, but are there any other sort of blogs or any other, you know, particular sort of people, authors, books, uh, you know, like aspiring PMs could follow? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, my, I think uh, the, the design of everyday things. Uh, so I think there are different areas of a book. So design is definitely one book that that is great. Uh, so design of everyday things as by Don Norman. Um, the other one that I really like, I think there's a book on crucial conversations, uh, which is generally good for communication. Uh, and like, you know, how to have hard discussions uh, with, with board members or engineers or whoever else you want to have. Uh, on execution, there is Mythical Man Month, which is a classic book on execution, right? Um, lean custom. Uh, should I be speaking slowly if people are taking notes, or is this okay? No, so, so there is uh, lean. Yeah. Go ahead.
Uh, I think you're on mute. Uh, I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I was saying that we'll be taking uh, notes and oh, sorry, we'll be taking recording and transcripts anyway. Um, so okay. we, you can talk naturally. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So there is a so there's a lean startup, which is which is an amazing book. Uh, if you haven't read it already, um, then there is lean customer development. Uh, that's that's pretty amazing. There is a book called Sprint, uh, which is from Google Ventures. That's another classic book for product managers. I think those are the top five, six that come to mind. Right? There are some great articles from Ben Horowitz uh, from from A sixteen Z that uh, is definitely like a must watch. Uh, their podcast and their articles that come out pretty much every week. So yeah, so I think those are those are the broad uh, resources uh, that you can leverage. Got it. Got it. Um, another question, you know, we've seen, uh, uh, you know, there's this cliche term that gets thrown around, which is, you know, that product managers are kind of the mini CEOs of their product, etc. And, you know, a lot of people have sort of feel that, you know, while at a company like Google or even a tw Twitter, where, you know, it's very product driven and, you know, sort of the monetization is off the, you know, product or the software itself. Let's say I'm working at an e-commerce company, right? Like a Flipkart, um, uh, a commerce driven company. How much of the business decisions do you think are or can be driven by a PM there? And like, where do you strike that balance, right? Because there's obviously going to be, you know, someone who's managing that category. And is there, does that ever lead to friction or, uh, and in those companies, then is it more clear that the PM should be more sort of uh, focused on the technology product and not on the, not on the business decisions? Exactly. I think it's not just a flip card, right? Even, even in large companies like Google and Microsoft, the larger the company becomes, the less decision-making anyone has. Like, forget product managers, right? Everyone has less decision-making as the company becomes larger. Like, when Microsoft has 130,000 people, there is no one person who is in control, right? Uh, so, I think, in general, the larger company you join, the less impact you will have. Unless you're at the top, right? So, um, so, so yeah, so I think uh, that's the, th which is why I think for, for young PMs, it's, it's great to join early stage companies and grow with them or join established companies at a higher level so that you have more impact. Uh, at the end of the day, the bug stops at impact, right? It, it, you'll be measured by the impact you have created. It's easier to create impact in smaller startups versus larger companies. And just talking about the, you know, talking about the the sprint process. Um, you know, if you, if you sort of uh, talk about the sprint process at a Google or a Twitter, um, should PMs ideally be, you know, leading that, you know, sprint planning and the process, or do you think it's better if, you know, some companies have like a, you know, like a, 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 a someone else, like a project manager, to actually sort of manage the the, the scrum? Yeah. Um. I would say, uh, in general, I think this is one thing that I've seen Indian companies do a lot, which is uh, which is not typical uh, to Bay Area companies, which is hire a lot of people uh, who basically have a functional expertise in something. So, for example, hiring a project manager when you have a team of eight engineers, right? So, in general, uh, do more with less, right? So don't hire a project project manager with a team of eight engineers, right? Do it yourself with the engineering manager, right? Or engineering lead, right? So, uh, yeah, but, but I'm not saying you should be responsible for the sprint as well, but define what the sprint process will be like. Make sure, by process, I mean, there needs to be a build that goes out every two weeks, right? You define what needs to go in the build, right? And then you make sure the build actually is on track to go out and you prioritize features if they are not going out two weeks. So, so you're not responsible for getting the build out. That's engineer's job to get the build out, right? But make sure the process is in place so the team is well-oiled and is shipping continuously. Right? You don't want to be in a situation that the team is shipping once in a quarter. Right? The team needs to ship every two weeks or every week, whatever the right cadence is. But you don't have to be responsible for that. You have to, again, influence that without being responsible for it. Got it. And uh, is, is sort of specialization in one industry, um, you know, like a recommended track, uh, you know, especially early on in the career of a team? Like, let's say I join a healthcare startup or I join an e-commerce company. 
Um, you know, people always ask that, will, you know, are the chances of me having a more sort of successful career if I just stick on, you know, and become like, okay, I'm, I'm specialized in, you know, edtech product. Or is it better to explore sort of more industries in the first sort of, or the first few years of my career and then sort of figure out, you know, if there's one thing that I want to kind of, uh, you know, drive more uh, towards. I think domain knowledge definitely helps. Definitely, right? If you were, if you were a product manager in e-commerce right now, you're a hot property, right? Because everyone is going after e-commerce. So I think uh, it's it's also risky. Just because e-commerce is hot right now doesn't mean it'll be hot like five years from now. Just because healthcare is like, you know, so it, it, it really depends. So specialization. So I personally don't like to specialize, right? I personally like to be someone who knows about, uh, I've always worked in consumer product companies, uh, but the products that I've chosen to work on are are in different domains always, right? So I think it depends. Uh, it's a risky move to specialize in one domain. If you're lucky that industry remains hot for the next 10, 20 years, you're great. But in general, product managers by definition, by definition need to be broad versus deep. Uh, so even if you have spent your five years in healthcare, the skills that you've acquired should equally apply to e-commerce if you're focused on building the right skills. Right. Um, there's a question from Deepak that I'll just slightly actually modify. Um, so, you know, there are, there are, you know, especially if you think about sort of design, user research, there are a lot of new frameworks, you know, that keep coming on. So people talk about, as Deepak has mentioned, like empathy mapping, impact mapping, so as a PM, should I sort of try and, you know, keep well versed with any new sort of framework or, you know, like uh, theories that are out, uh, you know, out there? Or is it better to just take things from a first principle basis? I think this is an area that I like to go deeper in definitely, right? Because, uh, because the three things that I mentioned, customer competition and your business, this is customer, right? So this is an area that you absolutely need to know really, really well. So I generally like to keep on top of both uh, user research and design part. So whether it's your design tools that are coming out, tools for prototyping like Marvel, Envision, Principle, what have you. Um, so I would say this is an exception where going deeper into this might help uh, because this is in those top three buckets, uh, which are really important for a PM. Right, right. Got it. Um, and I think there have been other sort of couple of questions on, you know, transitioning from engineering roles or QA roles, um, you know, to product management. And I think, uh, um, I think Kapil answered, uh, answered that already. But there's one sort of follow-up question to that, uh, um, Kapil, you mentioned about the challenges and the things that, you know, you should be sort of keeping in mind when, you know, you've transitioned from an engineering role to a PM role. Um, as an engineer or as a QA person, for example, in my company, and, you know, I'm now starting to get excited about or interested in a PM role. Are there things that I can do within my organization, you know, to sort of improve my chances or, you know, just uh, sort of improve my capability that when I go out in the market to search for a job as a PM, you know, I'll be taken more seriously. Exactly. I think so that what I did, I think, uh, is relevant here as well, right? So when I transitioned from an engineer to a PM, I started shadowing my PM and helping her out with whatever she needed, right? So it was metrics. So her thing was metrics. So I started doing that. So it depends on, so shadow your PM, uh, ask him or her for help. How can you help them? And and do essentially whatever it takes to uh, make them successful, right? Once you've done that, then essentially that is the entry into, so it depends, right? Your PM might not like to do user research. So you be the person who is doing user research uh, and helping him out. So, but as far as you're focusing on your customer, your competition, or the business, you're you're benefiting, right? So whenever your PM needs help with any of these, you volunteer and you help him or her out. As a young PM, like how important for my career do you think is having a good mentor, uh, you know, within my organization? Or if I feel that okay, it's a new organization. Should I actively try and look, you know, for a mentor who I can always sort of pick uh, brains on for different things? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's key. I think at least uh, the, the Bay Area companies, the Valley companies are very good in this. You not only have mentors from 
your company you also have mentors from other companies right so i think uh, having mentors is key um, if your company doesn't have a mentor program you should go and build one right and you should literally recruit uh, senior product managers to be mentees and then like you know i mean yeah i understand a lot of indian companies are not going to have those programs but there's nothing stopping you from building one in the company yourself it's key to have a good mentor because that that can make or break uh, your career in the future and as a pm how do you um uh, you know of course you've been like super experienced but if if something that you you know like something that you shipped or you know either product or feature you know fails um to deliver on you know what you had anticipated how do you deal with that because it can get very sort of you know demotivating and you know there might be sort of finger pointing from within the organization um what's what's the best way especially if you're a sort of a young pm out there trying to prove yourself um should you be afraid of failure in the beginning or you know is there a way to sort of learn and recover not at all not at all i think the the industry statistics are like 9 out of 10 products will fail massively right uh, like google was in the first search engine out there right there was alta vista there was yahoo before that there was ask.com there was like tons so never uh, you will actually in your entire career you'll be lucky if you like you know a small percentage of the products you have worked on become successful so i think you have to take the failure in your stride and not get disappointed because the failure is not really the failure of the idea the failure could be the failure of execution failure of the business model failure of how the landscape is right now uh, maybe this is a great idea but it's maybe built a little too early like you know it's like in 5 years this will be the next big thing so definitely like you know don't worry about failures because the more you fail the more you're going to succeed eventually so don't think about failure at all i mean if anything you should be proud of it that you tried something and you failed at it versus not doing anything at all Okay I think um, those were the questions we had couple um thanks thanks so much for your time thank you for joining us i think uh, those were those were absolutely great insights um and guys this was just you know one of the webinars that we have in you know the series for our uh, product management program and uh, you know i'll just take a couple of minutes just to talk about the program as well um you know it sort of touches upon a lot of things that couple mentioned uh you know is sort of learning the you know learning framework about three things right um and sort of how do you go about from having an idea to actually getting it built by working with teams within an organization uh and actually taking it to market um and the way we've sort of laid out is that you know we want to try and teach you that through a portfolio of a lot of real world projects so we've worked with um you know people senior product people in the industry with different companies you know right from like a zomato to a furlenco to an inmobi uh you know to create these product problems for you you know so that after the program when you go out there in the market you have a portfolio of work that you can show to someone and you know especially if you're transitioning from uh you know like another role um you know that's that's a lot of valuable sort of experience that you can go and show someone um and then the third thing we're sort of really focusing on in the program that uh, you know couple mentioned as something very important is mentorship um so you know as part of the program we will connect you uh, with a very senior person as a one on one mentor and again we've tried to go you know with sort of like really top companies in the indian ecosystem so we have people you know who are mentors from like uh, again you know zomato or furlenco and ola practo that couple mentioned actually that's his, you know uh, head of product which we mentioned is one of a couple's friends and he's one of our mentors so uh, we really try to give you know like sort of aspiring product managers the chance to have um, great one on one mentors and you know uh, hoping that that can really accelerate your career uh, into product management um so the program starts at the end uh, of this month and the applications are sort of still live um for this cohort so if anyone's interested you know just go on uh, upgrad.com and sort of uh, look for the program and you can apply but um uh, thank you once again kapil if you have uh, you know if there's anything else uh, that you'd like to add um you know thanks a lot for your time sure thing absolutely it was great see you guys bye thanks bye